thought we'd talk about you know what scale is and where it actually forms, um, and then maybe talk some some prevention. So, why don't you walk us through some scale here? All right. Well, scale is the enemy of your boiler. It's probably one of the number one death causing to boilers occurrences, uh -huh. and uh, the sad thing about it is it's preventable. Mm. So there are different types of scales and different routes of prevention. Um, most common scale is calcium magnesium scale because most of the water in the U.S. is hard water and if we don't remedy that with a softener um, we're going to end up with chunks of scale in the boiler. Mm. And uh, you know when we get scale in a boiler it's got a lot of drawbacks. First we lose efficiency right out of the gate because we start coating tubes we don't get the heat transfer and then in the long term if we're not transferring heat from the metal we're fatiguing the metal and we overheat it and we melt and we have a failure mm -hmm. so different types of boilers get different types of scale mm -hmm. water tube boilers are going to get scale inside the tubes because that's where the water is mm -hmm. um, fire tube boiler we're going to get scale on the outside of the tubes and this is you can't make this stuff up. This is natural, found in the wild scale, and may have come out of a boiler that uh, had to put a rental in there because right. it's not a it's not a quick fix. But proper water softener maintenance testing is going to ensure that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. There are other types of scale that we get in the system: uh, silica scale, which comes from the water coming in. We can't remove that with a water softener. So if we've got silica, we've got to use chemicals in the boiler and blow down to keep that below threshold where it's going to form. Mm -hmm. And then we get iron scale because if our condensate forms in the system, it's acidic. If we don't have proper chemical treatment in the system, we get that iron back to the boiler. And iron scale is very highly insulative. So we really want to watch that and maintain our condensate system. So it's funny how it all comes full circle mm -hmm. you know we bring we can bring scale in we can get scale back from the system right we can get process contaminants back in the system so that's where just keeping an eye on your boiler and keep an eye on the numbers it's going to keep that in good shape is this a, a a creep type thing or is this could this be an instant type thing that you could just scale a boiler quick or does it take time well, in the majority of cases, scales forming slowly over time mm -hmm. just due to intermittent issues with a water softener. Mm -hmm. But we've definitely had uh, units that we've sent out or started up, and in, in a week's time, we can have measurable scale on the tube. Mm -hmm. And I've seen rentals that went in pristine, and in one calendar year, they're just being hauled out to be retubed due to total failure. So. Mm -hmm. You got to stay on top of the water softener. It's really your first and most important line of defense and stay on top of your chemicals because they're designed to help keep the scale from sticking to the tubes. So anything that bleeds through the water softener stays in solution so that when we blow down and skim the boiler, we can remove that. But you know, you're going to get early indication of scale through your stack temperature mm. when you're not getting that heat exchange, your stack temperature's coming up. Right. And in the long term, you're gonna see it in your fuel bill, but fuel bills tend to creep up over time anyway, right. so right. it's a little less obvious. The county's not gonna call you and say, hey, did you scale your boiler up? But, sure. but sure. you will eventually have water running out the back, and that's always sort of a red flag. Yeah, you probably know that. <laughs> that's, that's a problem. So, And I know like in this particular, this is actually a superheater uh, tube, and I know that there was not any scale in the other part of the boiler, um, but it was stuck in the superheater. Well, the interesting thing about a superheater is there's no chemicals designed to be in there. There's no water designed to be in there. Mm -hmm. So if the chemicals in solution um, or the scales in solution, skimming and things take care of it. But if it gets carried out with the steam, due to sudden load swings or if those levels get too high, it can deposit in a superheater tube and that's just especially fatal because you know you think superheat, it's not hotter than anything else, but we're counting on just the steam to carry heat away. And so when we start putting deposits in there, it, it's it's like having scale in a boiler but eight times worse. Right. And and this is an example of, of carryover um, at the steam outlet where we're getting priming from too many solids and stuff going into the steam system. You know, we, we blow down the boiler and we have the chemicals in there, 
to take care of the boiler, but we really don't have anything in the steam system itself. You know, there's no blowdown in the steam system. There's nothing that we add to the steam system to get rid of it. So once it gets out of the boiler, it will show up in your traps and your superheaters and your steam lines, and, and it's sometimes catastrophic. As far as uh, water tube, fire tube, is there one that's more forgiving that has scale, or are they both pretty much the same? Well, I think fire tubes are inherently easier to fix if they're mm -hmm. scaled mm -hmm. because the straight tubes can be removed and replaced a little faster. Water tubes, a lot of times you get custom bent tubes and membrane tubes and, and they're not nearly as accessible. Mm. So if you've got a water tube boiler, you've got to stay on the water treatment because it's just, there's no going back. Once you plug a tube, you know, you're going to have a major repair. When you say stay on the water treatment, um, you know, obviously a lot of the boiler operators are not chemical folks. Sure. So when you say stay on it, what are they actually staying on? Well, if you're an operator, you got to be a chemical guy to some extent. Mm -hmm. You need to be testing your water softener daily because mm -hmm. your chemical guy is not going to be there every day. Right. And if we can get meaningful scale in the boiler in a week, then, you know, those test results are going to dictate whether we need to take action. Mm -hmm. And the chemical levels, the phosphates and the polymers, they prevent that from adhering to the tubes if we don't keep those levels where they need to be. And you don't have to be a chemical genius or engineer to do that, mm -hmm. but you got to do the testing daily and you got to make sure that it's in parameters. Mm -hmm. And if you've got very little condensate coming back, you just have to be all the more vigilant. Mm -hmm. You know, if we only filled the boiler once and all that condensate came back and we reused it, we wouldn't be worrying about water treatment or scale in the boiler. Mm -hmm. But all the fresh water coming in is just an opportunity for deposits and issues. So, right. you know, you're not a chemical guy, but no chemical company is going to write a check to retube that boiler. That's right. It's your equipment. So at the end of the day, you've got to be the last line of defense. You've got to be vigilant and, and do the testing and, and do the blowdown. Is that a daily thing? Absolutely. Okay. Um, on a industrial process boiler, those chemical tests should be done daily. And in many cases where we've got a lot going into the process, we may test those chemicals every shift, every eight hours. Mm. Um, and the same is true for blowdown. You know, if we've got a, a, a little boiler heating a church, we might be able to blow that boiler down once a day. But if we've got industrial processes not returning that water, we may need to be blowing down routinely, maybe twice a shift, mm. or have conductivity controls that blow down and skim the boiler automatically. Right. So it's just the more demanding an application you're using the boiler for, the more attention needs to be paid to it. Awesome, awesome. Well, we will put down below a link to a blowdown video that we actually did, and you can uh, check that out. And also, a little plug for Jude. Jude, being the Boiler University instructor, they actually go through all the chemical testing and everything for those operators during part of your uh, class, correct? Absolutely, because at the end of the day, if you don't take care of the equipment, it can't take care of you. Right. Today at Boiler U, we're going to talk about water. Water is critically important for your boiler, but not just that we put some in there. We've got to make sure we've got good water quality. And the type of water quality we're talking about today is hardness in water. Hardness in water is calcium and magnesium that comes from whatever your water source is, and they're terrible for your boiler. So in order to make sure we're not putting hard water in our boiler, we're going to test it daily using a water softener test kit. So I'm going to demonstrate that with two bottles of water, one that's soft, one that's hard, and, and I don't know which is which. Our water hardness test kit consists of three basic components, a buffer, an indicator, and a reagent. The first thing we're going to do is collect some water, and fortunately I've already done that. So we're going to get a sample, and we're going to take our little measurement tube, and we're going to fill it up to the appropriate line. Fourteen point six milliliters for indication in grains per gallon, which is what we're looking for. The buffer, five drops of buffer. Give her a swirl. Scoop of indicator powder. It's like making Kool-Aid. 
And guess what? This sample was soft. That's, we can tell that because it's blue. The second sample we know is untreated because I had one of each and we already found the soft sample. So I'm gonna rinse this first to make sure that we get rid of any residual soft water. Fill it to the mark. One, two, three, four, five. Give her a swirl. Now when I add the indicator powder, we see it's not blue and this is bad. This means that we're putting undesirable minerals in our boiler. But in order to properly set up the softener um, or to know how long uh, hardness has been bleeding through, we're gonna want to quantify or figure out how much hardness is in our sample. So we do that by adding the reagent and we count the drops. One, two, three, four, five. I give it a swirl. Six. It's turned blue. So that means our incoming water probably has between six and seven grains per gallon of hardness. Now you may ask what's a grain because that's sort of an abstract term. But if you've ever had a BB gun and you're familiar with BBs or kids that leave them laying around, a BB weighs about five to six grains. So every gallon of this untreated water going into your boiler is one BB of minerals that will deposit somewhere in your boiler. So if you're making up 10,000 gallons of water a day, you can imagine that that's a massive amount of minerals in very short time. It's critical to test your water softener daily. We want to have a sample point at the outlet of the water softener where we know we're getting a good fresh sample. We can even let that run for a few seconds to flush minerals or metal ions out. Um, the other thing that we want to document when we do our water softener is the number of gallons remaining before regeneration and which tank we're operating on. That can give us a history of information so that if we have to troubleshoot the softener in the future, um, we have those pieces of the puzzle.